What were your thoughts on, on Elton getting back on the field yeah, it was great. as soon as he did? And what did he mean to, to, the, to the line, the whole unit? Yeah, he brings, he brings the intensity up of everyone around him. Um, you know, you could see that just extra juice that we had. Um, you know, he was a little rusty. I think that every week he's going to get a little bit better. Um, so he knows that, and he's working on that. He's had a good week of practice so far. Um, yeah, but it was great to have him back. Just what stands out about Tampa Bay's defense pass rush, and specifically how is it different or similar to what you saw a couple of years ago? Uh, it's very similar to the defenses we faced uh, in the 2020 season. Um, very aggressive, no holes from their front to their linebackers to their secondary. Uh, really good personnel, good aggressive scheme. Um, and they, they, they test your rules, they test you physically, um, and it'll be a fun matchup for us because uh, they're a good defense. I know there's a variety of reasons for it, whether it's maybe a miscommunication on protection or <clears throat> Aaron holding onto the ball or guys not being open, but he kind of acknowledged yesterday he's probably taken more hits than he wants to or even should. Um, what's your concern level there? And with all the different reasons that that can happen, how do you kind of reduce that number? Yeah, I mean, it starts up front with the offensive line and the backs and the tight ends and protection. It always does. Um, and then, yeah, just like Aaron said, you know, he a lot of times he's been known for holding on to the ball and creating those extra plays downfield. So there's a fine line that you kind of walk when you do that. Um, but I'm sure as the season goes on and he gets more comfortable with the wide outs and everything like that, um, hopefully we see less of those where he's you know running around and taking big hits. So um, yeah, we just got to clean that up. But yeah, you definitely won't, don't want to see the quarterback getting hit ever, so. Josh made his first NFL start basically a year ago. Um, just what have you thought of his growth over the last, uh, you know, you know, since that game against San Fran, up work towards. Yeah, you. he's he's done a great job. Um, just a humble kid, hardworking kid, um, has all the tools to be a great old lineman in the NFL, um, and he's just gotten a little bit better every week, every time he goes out there. Um, so I've been really proud of him, the way he battles and just you know how far he's come along. Uh, Adam, it seems like. Uh... Gutekinds gives you tackles every year, athletic tackles, and then you have to turn them into guards or centers or whatever it ends up being. But um, how do you get those guys to learn how to be pulling guards? Because isn't that a pretty, uh, you know, skill? Yeah, that is. Job? No, it, it's a lot different when you're not used to it. Um, yeah, you just kind of coach them up, take them through drills, do all that stuff, and then it's about just getting reps and going out there and doing it. Um, but you, you got to have guys with the right mindset, and you see guys pulling. And you know, if they if they have the right mindset to go kick somebody's butt when they're pulling around there, that's what it's all about. And there's some really cool clips uh, from last week's game of you know Runyon and Josh Myers going around the around the edge, just knocking the crap out of people. So that was fun to watch. Hey Adam, last week you said you'd be a surprise and find out who was going to be your starting off lineman. Yeah. Can we say the same thing about your receiver core this week? Yeah, I mean we're. We're just taking it one day at a time, really. And uh, these guys, they they are battling every day. And, you know, it's, again, going to be kind of the same situation. Back to, you know, you were talking to Tom about pulling linemen and stuff. And I was just asking about Yash. There's, I forget which touchdown it was, where it was a touchdown to the right. And Yash was over there. Yeah. That was one of the damnedest things I've ever seen yeah. to see your left tackle. Yeah, he was 30 yards to the right. He was going to cut off the backside linebacker, and uh, he flowed fast, so he couldn't get him. So he just kept on going and <laughs> ended up blocking a safety. So yeah, I mean that's what you got to do. If we always tell him, if you can't get that guy, go get the next guy. And you know we have some really good running backs that can make some people miss. So it, it kind of pays off right there. Yeah, I'm not trying to put the guy in the Hall of Fame or something like that, but have you ever seen a lineman quite that athletic? I mean. To where he was in the field, I don't think I've. Uh, you know, he's up there, definitely, um, with as far as the physical tools and stuff like that. Um, probably the most gifted guy I ever saw was Joe Staley, uh, as far as speed and strength and stuff like that. But yeah, Yash, Yash is up there with that. Yeah, are there um, things you guys talk about or, or um, 
think about in terms of your motion, like what you can do with it, mm -hmm. or are they all, you know, usually pretty simple as to what you're trying to do? No, there's a lot of game planning that goes into that, just as far as what we call creating consternation for the defense. You know, kind of want to keep the second level players on their toes, you know, make them look sideline to sideline instead of focusing on what, you know, the downhill stuff and their keys. Um, and always, anytime you're changing strength or flying, they have checks and communication things that they have to do. So they're focused on that and then not focused on other stuff like run fits or their drops and all that stuff. So that's a big part of our game plan. It has been for a while. And I think, um, yeah, if you game plan it right, you can really use it to your advantage. When you get, you know, Aaron Jones scoring on one, yeah. um, and, and you get Christian Watson around the edge a couple times, does that really benefit you in terms of the next week or, you know, teams having to prepare for you? Oh, definitely. Yeah, it definitely does. Because you want to make them defend the entire field, you know, from sideline to sideline, from the line of scrimmage all the way, you know, for the deep balls. And uh, that's basically what you have to do uh, to be effective in this league because there's a lot of good players and you just got to, Keep them on their toes. I don't know, you guys obviously got the ball to Jones and Dylan a ton. And after the game, one of us asked Aaron if there was enough in the playbook to continue to be creative about it. And he compared it to apparently Tom Fanning loving jelly beans and oh. taking a handful of jelly beans. And there's still plenty left in the bag. And it turns out Tom doesn't even like jelly beans. Mm. Um, I'm wondering, though, first of all, do you like jelly beans? And yeah, I'm, I like basically all candy, if you, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, yeah. And secondly, like, in your, like, obviously the Buccaneers aren't stupid, right? They know no. what you guys did last week. Mm -hmm. They know those guys are playmakers. They know you're going to want to give them the ball. So do you feel good about just the amount of volume you guys have in your offense of different creative ways to get those guys involved, even if teams are kind of hell-bent on taking them out of it? Yeah, that's kind of like when you install your offense in OTAs and training camp, you really overload these guys with a lot of stuff. You know, you have, you pretty much introduce them to everything that they're going to see for the most part, probably 90% of what they're going to see on a game day, but you put it all in, you know, one day at a time for about two weeks. And then once you get to the game plan stuff, then it all cuts back and now they can focus on these pieces here and there and it kind of shrinks down. Um, so yeah, it's, you have to have tools for everything, and you always have to come up with new stuff to be creative, you know, because if you're doing the same stuff week in and week out, like you said, these guys are smart. They're going to they're gonna game plan you and stop you. So that's the big challenge with the offense is just always being creative, trying to find explosive plays, trying to get the ball to your playmakers. Um, so, yeah, that's a constant struggle for us. So then in addition to all that stuff that you put in that you can use different variations of, do you and Matt get to be kind of in the laboratory a little bit? Because I would think with the skill sets those two guys have, yeah. that you, you, can re you can get creative. Are you yeah, able to draw no. some stuff up even now? That's, that's the thing that you have to limit yourself um, in every game plan. You can't have too much stuff. You know, for one guy, you'll wear him out. You know what I mean? So you kind of got to spread around. But, yeah, you have to always have, you know, couple plays for him here, a couple plays for him there. Um, just, again, to find creative ways to get the ball in his hands. And, and if you do that enough times, some really cool things are going to happen. Matt said that he thought the uh, second and 28 screen to Romeo where he got 20 was probably the most pivotal play of the game. Yeah. It, is it tough to teach young receivers on play specifically like that to be patient to set up their blocks because maybe sometimes they just want to go 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 yeah and no how it, impressive was that one that was did. you're right that was one of the cooler plays of the game was just his natural catching the ball with ease but then finding that seam and trusting his blockers and just hitting it um so that was encouraging because if you can find guys that are good at plays like that you you got some playmakers which is always fun Back to the going week to week uh, off of everything you worked off of, say, OTAs, training camp, and everything you've installed. It seemed on Sunday night, and I don't need you to get into specifics, but it looked like you had a, at least a handful of really interesting sets out along the offensive mm -hmm. line where you had somebody, like I think at one play, Josh was like way off the guard. Mm -hmm. Is that 
team specific? Is that something like, okay, yeah. we think we can take advantage yes. of this personnel? Or yep. No, it definitely is. Like, you know, you see this is how they're going to line up to something and, you know, open up your split or something like that. Yeah, you're always trying to find specific things like that.